Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. So, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is about using Affinity Photo with Capture One. For those who want to cut the Adobe cord, Affinity Photo is a popular alternative to Photoshop and it makes a good companion to Capture One. But even if you still use Lightroom and Photoshop, many people still like Affinity Photo for its modern user interface and its speed. So, Working with Affinity Photo and Capture One is fairly straightforward, but there are a few gotchas and things to look out for. So let's dive right in. So the first thing I want to do is talk about some like basic round tripping between Capture One and Affinity Photo. So what I mean by that is sending an image to Affinity Photo from Capture One, doing some work on it, and then sending it back. So to start with, I am going to use this image here of the White House, and just to give you a quick example. So what I want to do is we've got these railings down the bottom here, and they're kind of an eyesore, and we want to remove them. And it would be quite difficult to do that in Capture One. Not impossible, just difficult. So I'm going to send it to Affinity Photo in order to do that. Okay, so to send to Affinity Photo, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, you can right click on the thumbnail in the browser here and go edit with and wait for the menu to load and then choose Affinity Photo. Now, depending on how many applications you have installed, you probably won't have as many options in your menu as I do here. So the other place you'll find this command is from the image menu. And again, we have edit with and affinity photo. Now, this is super important. You have to go with edit with and not the other command here, which is open with edit with and affinity photo. So this will pop open this little dialogue at the top of the capture one interface and you will see we've got all these options. So it's important that when you're working with Affinity Photo that you choose TIFF as the format. Now, Affinity Photo will load PSDs as well, but according to some of their documentation, you may experience some data loss if you use uh, PSD. So I, it's best to use TIFF. 16-bit um, or 8-bit, that's up to you. I prefer 16-bit because it preserves the most amount of data possible. And then... Uh, you can choose to either have it compressed or uncompressed. I'm just leaving it uncompressed because I have plenty of space. And then everything else is kind of um, just the defaults are fine. So all you have to do then is go edit variants. And this will then send it over to Affinity Photo. So here we are in Affinity Photo. And now you can see it's loading the document. And there we have it's loaded. So now I can go ahead and do my edits. So what I want to do is I want to remove these railings down the bottom here. So I'm going to do this super quick. This should be a fairly straightforward thing to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this bit of ground here and copy it. Command J, this will just copy it. And all I do is just, I'm just going to move this over and it's not quite big enough. So I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm just doing this super quick. I'd be more careful if I was doing it properly. Okay. Um, and that's probably going to be a bit harsh, so we just want to put a mask on this. Okay, and then we're going to use our brush tool. So we go to our brush tool over here, and we want to make sure it's a fairly large brush with a very, uh, we want hardness set to zero, so we want a soft edge brush. And we just brush over the edge like so, and then brush over the other edge, and then just maybe a little bit at the top. Okay, and there we go, the railings are gone. So the next thing we do is now we can send it back to Capture One. So to do this, fairly straightforward, all you have to do is hit save. So we can do file, save, or we can hit command S on the Mac and control S on the PC. So when you hit save, you're gonna get this dialog box. So a TIFF is not Affinity Photo's native format. So what it will do is allow you to save um, all the proprietary Affinity Photo information in a TIFF document, and they call this Affinity Layers. So it's asking you, would you like to save a TIFF with Affinity Layers or save a new document? So if you go to Save As, it will save it in the .af photo format. But if you go Save with Layers, it will keep it as a TIFF. And that's what we want to do here because we, we basically want to write over the existing TIFF and send it straight back to Capture One. So again, the most important thing here is save with layers. So if we do that, 
export, export, export. And now pop back over to Capture One. And right below it, here we have our newly created TIFF and our barriers are gone. Okay, so as I said, super straightforward. But what happens now if I want to edit that file again? So you could, you're probably thinking, oh, I'll just go and do the same command again. I'll go edit with and then affinity photo again. But no, <laughs> you don't want to do that because what happens if you do that is it will make a copy of the file and it will actually flatten it. So what you want to do instead is, instead of going edit with, this time you need to go open with. So when you choose open with, it literally just sends the file over. It doesn't do any of the process that we did earlier where it made a copy and made a TIFF of it. So this time, if you want to re-edit your file, go open with and then affinity photo. So there we can see we still have all of our documents layers still intact. I can just do whatever changes I want here. So say for example, I wanted to add we can do maybe just, I'll just do something here just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So we just put a, just a quick curve. Okay, and then just hit save. So save again. And when you do when you do this the second time, when you're re-editing a document, it doesn't ask you um, to, if you want to save as affinity layers, it only asks you that the first time. Okay, and again, pop back over, and just, just takes a second to reload. Okay. There you go. Okay, so that is basic round tripping. So the next thing is, what happens if you want to send a raw file to Affinity Photo? Because at the moment, what it's doing is, uh, if when you send a file over, um, it's basically making a flattened TIFF of the file and sending it to Affinity Photo. And that's, in most cases, is what you want to do because it is basically using the Capture One engine to do the raw decode and whatever adjustments you have made in Capture One, it'll bake them into the file and send it over. So if we go to send a raw file to Affinity Photo, it will use Affinity Photo's raw engine and the file will actually end up looking quite different than it does in Capture One. So to show you what to do, uh, I'm going to send this file over to Affinity Photo. So again, right click on it and this time to send the raw file, you want to go open with. So open with Affinity Photo. Okay, so we're now in the develop persona in Affinity Photo and as you can see it's actually quite a bit different because I had made some changes in Capture One and also to the raw engines a bit different so I will just make a few changes here maybe increase the contrast a bit. Okay, and then I can just go develop. And now I can do whatever other edits I want to do here. Uh, I'm not really going to do anything um, for the moment because I'm just showing you what to do. So the, the trick is now, how do I get that back to Capture One? Because if you look up here in the file, it's actually, it, it's opened the raw file, so it doesn't have a TIFF to save back over. So what you would have to do is basically export this as a TIFF and manually re-import it into Capture One choose export so file export and you want to select tiff so you have two options now you can basically just export it somewhere like your desktop and then manually re-import it into capture one or there's a little trick you can do to kind of bring it back in in the same place so to do that what you need to do is save it into the same location as the raw file so the problem is if i go export here now it's not really going to be in the right spot. Like it's just in a folder here that I have called <laughs> untastefully crappy street shoes. So like if I look in my photos, I'd have to try and manually find it, which is going to be a bit of a pain. So here's a trick to quickly find the folder. So I'm going to jump back over to capture one for a second and I'm going to right click on it on the image and go show in finder. This should have opened the folder um, where the file is. So if I now, and this is this gets a little tricky, so just bear with me a second. So I'll jump back to Affinity Photo and back to the finder. And then all I have to do is just drag this in here. And now that folder is selected. So now I can just hit save. And you can actually call this whatever you want. So, okay, and then just hit save, okay. So that's now exporting as a TIFF file. 
So we jump back over to capture one and the next thing we want to do is to synchronize the folder. So first of all, you have to actually be in the folder. Um, and at the moment I'm in a collection. So if you look here, you can see I'm in a user collection. So to find the folder, all I do is right click on the image and go show in library. This will now bring me to the folder. So now all I have to do is right click on it and go synchronize. And then this will bring up this dialog box and we go import one new image into catalog and we can tick, we can leave show importer ticked off because otherwise it'll bring open the import dialog box and you don't really need that. And um, the only case where you might need it is if you had any styles or presets set to apply an import, you might want to open this just to turn them off. But for the purposes of this, um, this is basically all you need to set. So I'm just going to hit sync. Okay, and this will import the file I just saved from Affinity Photo. So don't worry if you see that it goes says importing so many images and you think, oh God, it's importing everything again. Uh, it's not, <laughs> it's just scanning through them. So don't worry about that. Okay, so what that's done now is it's created a new import collection up here. So you can see it with just that image in it. But if we want to go back to the folder again, again, just right click on it and go show in library. And it'll bring us back to the folder and you can see it's now back beside the other original uh, raw file. So obviously sending a raw file to Affinity Photo and getting it back is a bit of a complicated and um, long-winded procedure. Um, it probably looks worse than it is here because I'm talking through step by step. Um, but in for most cases, you're, you're probably not going to want to send the raw file to Affinity Photo anyway. Um, you're more than likely going to want to just send it uh, normally using the edit with command. Um, but if you do, there is the workflow that you need to follow. Um, okay, so that is pretty much it. The biggest takeaway from this is uh, the thing you most need to be aware of is when to use edit with and when to use open with. So when you're editing a file in Affinity Photo for the first time, you want to use edit with. And when you want to re-edit that file that you've saved back in Capture One, you choose open with. And if you want to send a raw file to Affinity Photo, you choose open with. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to it. So I hope you have found this useful. I have a written version of this uh, tutorial as well, which you can find on my website, and I will have a link in the description below. And I have it all broken down into step by step with screenshots and everything, so you might find that a little easier to follow. And if you want more Capture One tutorials, check out my Capture One playlist here on YouTube and some of my other Capture One tutorials on my website. And thanks for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See you next time.